Welcome to We Make Change, the tiny house build. Today we're going to be looking at fabrication of our tiny house trailer frame. This is part two of a multi-part series of how-to videos regarding the design and build of our tiny house trailer. Uh, refer to website www.wemakechange.co.nz for links to further videos and other information. The first step after cutting your material to length is to get out the grinder slash file and remove all the sharp edges from the cuts. Uh, this is for safety and also so your material butts up together squarely and snugly. You can see the material that was purchased for this build is has a blue coating. Uh, this is a primer that they apply to the steel just to stop it uh, rusting, especially when it's sitting outside. So to get a good penetrating weld, it's better if um, the the primer can be grinded off, as as seen in this image here. You don't have to get super fussy with this, but if you get the majority of it off it is going to help the welding process. Uh, so this here is a corner join and sort of in the subframe of the trailer. This cut slot here was cut using a grinder. This here is for the galvanizing process to allow the zinc uh, to flow out from this rectangular hollow section. Um, I'll detail more about um, where and why to cut holes in your fabrication in a later video. So the number one rule when building a trailer or for that matter any sort of fabrication that you want flat is to do a lot of prep work and make sure what you're about to weld up is going to be flat and square. It's worth taking the time now because if you get this wrong your whole house is going to be skew with um, so as you can see we're, we're fortunate enough to be working on a relatively flat smooth concrete floor um, and we've decided to put the four sections that um, form this part of the frame just up on timber just so it's easier to sort of um, get the welder in there um, and to line things up and chock things up as required. We were lucky enough to get our hands on an optical level the way this works is the level is sits in one position as seen over here and not moved through the leveling process. And then the other person holds a pole um, off each corner in our case. Uh, the length of that pole does not change and the sight is lined up to the pole. So any differences means we need to either lower or raise the trailer to ensure that all corners are level. Level is one important factor. The second very important factor is ensuring that your frame is square. To do this we ran a tape measure diagonally from one corner across to the other which required two people and then we switched over and did the adjacent corners. Um, we found that banging the trailer around um, just by tapping it was the best approach just to, n to nudge things around slowly because we're only talking about a few mils here and there. Um, we found that we could get the trailer within plus or minus a mil. Once we were happy with the level of the trailer it was time to clamp the four pieces of steel together in this case we use large steel sash clamps that would put up with the heat of the welding process. So looking at this corner from another angle you can also see we've clamped the material up and down as well. This is to make sure that the top surfaces line up with each other and also the bottom surfaces. And from there once we've got, once we're 100% sure that everything's a-okay in terms of squareness and level we've tacked, tacked welded the two members together. So a very similar process used here to clamp this, the middle cross member 
a uh, combination of using clamps and wood. So once this part of the frame was all tack welded together, um, we ensured again that the level was good and the squareness was good. And then from there to avoid any distortion, because as uh, the welding process involves a lot of concentrated heat, it tends to warp metal. So to minimise the frame from warping, we tack welded some spare metal across the top of the frame. This, is, this was to hold, help hold the frame in place while we were welding uh, the cross members would set up. We used an anti-splatter product that you spray on around the areas that you're welding. This reduces uh, the welding splatter sticking to your metal. Um, it did a very good job, but after applying we realised that the anti-splatter product is not great when you want to galve dip your trailer. Uh, the zinc um, tends to not want to stick where you've sprayed the anti-splatter. Um, so I would not recommend using this product if you're going to galve dip your trailer. Um, I ended up um, using an abrasive pad and rubbing off the anti-splatter. Here's a close-up of one of the welds. As you can see there's great penetration through both sections of material to basically form the two pieces into one piece. So after this section of the frame was welded up we did a sanity check and measured from corner to corner again to check squareness and we found that we were within one mil um, even after the, the heat from the welding process so the next step on this part of the frame was to measure and locate and clamp um, these brackets which are going to help hold the subfloor down. Um, it was about this part of the process I started realising that fabrication was uh, about 90% set up and about 10% welding. So with this section complete on the top side uh, we needed to flip it over. This section was nearing on 200 kgs, so luckily we had the right equipment and a forklift to be able to flip this frame over safely and easily. So once we flipped the frame over, we put the fabrication up onto stands to aid for a good working height. Then we d proceeded to lay up uh, the second frame on top of the frame we've already built. Uh, this was a very similar process to I explained earlier in the video for uh, grinding, cleaning up the ends, uh, taking the primer off, clamping, uh, measuring twice, three, four times on everything. Now's a good time to mention that this trailer is made up of two frames in two separate sections. Uh, the prime reason for this is the restrictions on the local galvanising tank uh, the only way I could fit a trailer of this magnitude was to split it up into two sections. So we did have a bit of warping in the first frame we welded, um, in between the centre of the frame and the rear. Um, this, is, this is due to the heat in the welding process. Um, so to line this bent frame up with uh, the new frame that we're welding on top, um, we just used a car jack and a bit of uh, two by four just to just to jack out uh, the frame a bit to straighten it up. So once we got uh, the second frame um, all in place and happy with all the measurements, we tack welded this frame to the existing frame we made previous. This is to ensure that both the frames are going to line up and reduce the chances of warping through the welding process. So once we tack welded uh, the bottom frame up and we're all happy with the measurements we laid down the final welds. Um, also at this stage we added um, a supporting bracing plate uh, here to support the drawbar and we also welded uh, the axles onto this bottom frame as well. Here you're looking at the underside of the trailer at the drawbar end. 
Um, here we've we've prepped up a five mil plate that we're proceeding to hold on with a clamp. And here's the same plate after welding. So once all the welding was done um, on the bottom of this frame, we flipped it over so it's facing up and welded all the top sections that needed welding. 